Good evening, good evening. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, good evening. Feeling a little tired in my body, but I'm gonna need y'all to pray with me tonight, amen? God is good, God gives strength. I hope you had a great day. This evening, our Bible study lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The focus text is verse 58. However, we're going to read from verse 50 on down to 58. So if you would follow along with me. Get your Bibles. Amen. This is Bible study. How can we study without our Bible? Amen. After you've done all you can, just stand. Amen. Seemed like it didn't want to go off. Um, again, our subject tonight is abounding in the work of the Lord. We're going to be coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Our focus text is the verse 58. However, we're going to read from 15, 50 all the way down to 58. So if you have your Bibles, I would need you to follow along with me. This is Bible study. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven. God, we ask right now that you forgive us of all of our sins, blot out all of our transgressions, wash us and purge us, oh God. We ask that you cover us, God, with your glory. Consume our hearts and our minds, God. Prepare us to receive what thus says the Lord. Refresh us, refresh our inner man, oh God. Send your power from on high. Help us to be obedient to your will, oh God. Help us to be obedient to your way, O oh God. We ask now that you give us wisdom and give us a greater understanding so that we be able to apply your word in our daily lives. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. All right. Just reading your hearing. I pray you all had a good day. And you've had time to take a load off. Amen. Thank you for joining me again this week. You can be anywhere else, but you choose to log on and be here with us in Impact Hour. And we're grateful. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. And it reads, But I tell you this, brethren, flesh and blood cannot become partakers of inter eternal salvation and inherit or share in the kingdom of God. 
nor does the perishable that which is decaying inherit or share in the imperishable, the immortal. Take notice, I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed, transformed. 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, free and immune from decay, and we shall be changed, transformed. For this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature and this mortal part of us, this nature that is capable of dying must put on immortality, freedom from death. And when this perishable puts on the imperishable and this that was capable of dying puts on freedom from death, then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says, death is swallowed up, utterly vanished forever in and unto victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Now sin is the sting of death and sin exercises its power upon the soul through the abuse of the law. But thanks be to our God who gives us the victory making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware of your labor in the Lord is not fruitful, it is never raced, wasted or to no purpose. God, we thank you for your word on this evening. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. We're here because we want to become better doers. We want to make sure that we're following what the Lord has given us to live by. Amen. The Apostle Paul here in this chapter 15 of first corinthians laid out an argument of text or speech if you will to help many of the believers of the corinthian church take a whole firm to hold fast the lasting impression that they had implanted on their memories which was the word that he along with the other apostles had taught the corinthian church concerning the essence of the gospel. We know the gospel is Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection. Least their faith, the Corinthian church, would be in vain. He was trying to help them realign, get back, get back where they were supposed to be because they had started, uh, as many do in the church now, not our church, amen, <laughs> As many have done now, they've, they've drawn, they've been carried away by every little fad, every philosophy of false doctrine that's out there, which contradicts the foundation. So they were following the, the Greek philosophy. And so Paul wrote this text to try to help them get to a place to where they wouldn't be wavering, where they would be able to stand firm uh, upon the foundation that had been given unto them. Amen. So um, the foundation that the Greeks follow, it contradicts that which we stand on as Christians. The Corinthian church was pulled away from Christ because of this. The, well, those who were following the Greek philosophy, they were uh, pulled away because that particular contemporary philosophy that was given by the Greeks it did not hold, uh, it would prove true that the resurrection of Christ happened, but it questioned the resurrection of believers. And so Paul demonstrated here that the two go hand in hand. Christ is resurrected and the believers 
are to be resurrected through Christ Jesus. Amen. The resurrection is essential to the Christian faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And a denial of the resurrection of Christ from the dead is a denial of the gospel. The gospel is from Genesis to Revelation. It all goes hand in hand. Amen. Which is the good news. These scriptures are holy. These scriptures are pure. The Holy Bible is pure. The scriptures go together. It goes hand in hand. And Christ was resurrected from the dead. And so shall we be also. Only a fool would say in his heart, there is no God. The words of the Lord are pure. They are tried and furnished on, on the earth, purified. They've been purified. So keep the word of the Lord. The Lord shall keep his word and preserve them from generation from generation. And we as believers... If we were to fall prey, as the Corinthian church did, questioning the foundation that's been laid out for us by the apostles, then that would mean that those that went before us, who passed on, that their believing was in vain, that they believed for nothing, that they lived for nothing, and they died for nothing. We're living for Christ. They said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We're standing for Christ and the truth of God's word. Our living is not in vain. And we thank God for the Holy Scriptures. And, and then we have a witness. We've read, we've seen. Many were raised from the dead. So that should not have been a question. But the Corinthians begin to question, question it. Let's just take an account of some of the people who were raised from the dead. Elijah raised the son of Zeherophat, the widow, from the dead. He, he raised the widow's son from the dead. Elijah raised the son of the Shudamite woman from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. We know that. Jesus raised the daughter of Jeharis from the dead. Peter raised Dorcas, Tabitha, from the dead. And many saints rose from the dead of the resurrection of Christ. There are a few others, but these are the ones that we want to talk about in this study. We know that we shall be resurrected from the dead also on that great day. And so in order to complete the harvest, which is the coming of the Lord, every believer of Christ will also be resurrected. And to our focus text, 1 Corinthians Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, not carried away by itching ears, always abounding in the work of the Lord, excelling, doing more, more than enough in service of the Lord, knowing and believing continually, remaining aware, sure, confident that your labor in the Lord shall never be wasted or without purpose, it is not in vain. God sees you, God knows, and God rewards. You gotta know that you know that you know that you know. I am who I am because of I am. And I'm standing on the truth of his word, and this is why the devil is mad. He doesn't want you to stand on a firm foundation. He wants you to waver or, or be confused in your mind as the Corinthians had allowed themselves to be. But Paul came in and he had to clear that thing up real quick. Hey, let me get y'all to focus on what it is that we taught you. You are the church of God. So you're going to follow the Holy Scriptures of God. And this is what he did. We got to stand firm. Don't let nothing move us. The first church was loving, learning, evangelizing, and worshiping God. 
and their faith accomplish the will of God in their lives. Their faith accomplish it. Because why? Faith without works is dead. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. They heard the word of God so that their faith increased. Yes, many like to say that all we need, as the scripture says, we've all been given a portion of faith and a and, uh, size of a mustard seed. But their faith had increased so that they were abounding in the works of the Lord. And, and what it was that they believed by faith, faith was accomplished in the earth. And many more believed because of their belief. They saw them walking in faith. They saw them living in faith. They saw them learning faith, listening, believing it in their hearts. They got the word down in their hearts and they were able to accomplish great things by faith. And this is where we have to be. We can't allow our faith to be challenged. We can't allow ourselves to be wavering. Uh, doubting the word of God. Some of us doubt because we, we don't know. We don't know because we don't open our Bible or we don't attend Bible study. And I'm glad that you all are here on today and you all have been joining me in the Bible study and we're doing better because this is what the Lord expects from us. He expects us to not be the same as we were. Maybe we knew a little bit uh, yesterday, but today we're going to know a little bit more. Why? Because here we are. We in Bible study. We're learning. Amen. And this is where we want to be. We want our faith to accomplish the will of God here on earth. Because that's, that's what the word says. The model prayer says with our father in heaven, his will be done in heaven as it is on earth and how can his will be done if we're not petitioning him to manifest his glory here on earth while we're here while we're waiting on the come oh, on the great day amen when you're serving god without reservation there's no comfort zone we're standing firm we're believing god that our labor is not in vain so we have to stretch a little bit. I'm stretched a whole lot right now. Amen. <laughs> I'm an introverted person, but in Christ, there's no place for that. He's given me many gifts. He's given me many abilities and he's called me to do something different right now. So being on video, uh, <laughs> it, it's a big step for me. It's a stretch. I am way out of my comfort zone. And so I know that the Lord is pleased. Amen. That I'm doing the work of the Lord without fear, without shame. Uh, matters not if I stumble over my words sometimes because I deal with certain situations. He did it for Moses and Moses uh, had a stutter. I don't have a stutter. But because I'm used to being introverted and not so much in front of the camera. I do a lot of things behind the scenes. Yeah, sometimes it might look like that, but here we are. We're doing the work of the Lord. We push past our comfort zone. We, we're not serving God in reservation. Uh, we've chosen, we said, here I am, Lord. Send me. I'll go. I'll do it. We took a stand. Amen. In our pastor's absence, Lord, give him strength. He's at work. He's working evenings now. And so we have to continue the work of the Lord at Empowerment Temple Church of God. And we're delighted that he's entrusted us to lead and, and do these Bible studies in his absence. We don't take it lightly. So when we are abounding in the work of the Lord, our faith, our trust, our hope, remains in the Father, not in ourselves, in the Father, not in our neighbors, not in our leaders. We each have to have our own uh, faith. You can't lean on my faith. I can't lean on your faith. We have to have our faith rooted, grounded, anchored in the Lord. 
And we have to know that our faith is greater than our sufferings. We will suffer many things, but being the righteous of God, he's going to bring us out of the things that we suffer when we trust him. We have to trust him. We got to know that the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my safety net. The Lord is my peace. We have to know these things. This is why we have to get the word deep down in us so that we can have something to stand on whenever we're challenged with any one of those areas. He got it all covered. God is our everything. And we have to appreciate him being our everything. And by faith, we can conquer anything. When our hope and our trust and our belief is in God, we got to know that God is at work in our lives. And he's here to take care of us in every need. He takes care of us when we are in hard places, when we experience hardships. Amen. I believe that we experience hardships because God wants to make us better, better than we were before, better, better than we can imagine that we'll be. It's a part of separating the wheat from the tap. Who's going to stand strong? Are you going to stand strong? Hopefully you are. You're going to stand strong. You're going to stand on the foundation. You're going to stand on the scriptures. You're going to believe God for his every word because his word cannot go out and return unto him void. That means that the word that is deep down in you, you got to put it out there. You got to speak it. You got to believe it. You got to know that it's going to manifest the things that you declare for it to do. It's not going to come back to you void. The Lord shall do exactly what his word says. And as we close out this study, we want to take with us the key to abounding in the work of the Lord, the key to abounding in our faith, just to stand is prayer. It's prayer. Many of us don't want to pray because we think we don't know how to pray. And I say we think we don't know how to pray is because we, we're watching other people or, or we think that we have to use big exquisite words or we don't sound like them or we don't look like them or you, it's just something that you're comparing. But it is not about that. It's about the words that are deep down in you. God knows each one of us. He wants us to speak what we know. He wants to, us to talk to him like we talk to uh, our friends, our family. Connect with him. Build a relationship with him. It's just talking to God. That's just our prayer is. And maybe it would be helpful for some if you get a prayer journal. Write down some things that you, you, you're believing God for. Write them down. Speak them. Speak them as you've written them. And you're praying. You're declaring what it is that you want God to do. But we have to be mindful. You want to acknowledge who God is first, who he is in your life. You want to repent of your sins. You want to thank him for all that he's done. And then go on with your little list that you wrote out. Amen. Just, just make sure that you admonishing your God when you do it. Amen? So, because without prayer, we won't be able to abound. We'll grow weary in well-doing. But with prayer, we'll wait on the Lord who shall renew our strength and we'll mount up with wings as an eagle. <laughs> we'll run and not be weary. See, the thief comes but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But what the Lord has come to do is to give us life, life more abundantly. And we have to receive the word of the Lord as he's given us. We seek for eternal, 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 eternal life is what we want. 
this life here on earth, this is not what we're seeking for. We're seeking this eternal life. We're seeking that resurrection because the believers shall be resurrected with Christ on that great day. And as David said, he has brought me up out of the horrible pit, set my feet upon the rock and established my goings, which pretty much means I shall not be moved. I don't care who comes to try to sway me or to sell me some other philosophy or doctrine or who uh, to, uh, question in the word of the Lord, making it a conspiracy when it's not a conspiracy. It is the truth of God's word. And this is what we're supposed to live by. We're supposed to stand assured that the word of the Lord is the word for the believer. So if anybody comes to us with anything other than the word of the Lord, we, we don't give them God's speed. Amen. This is what it is that we're going to have to do because the enemy is coming. The Antichrist is it's widespread. All these fake uh, false prophets, the word is manifesting itself. And I don't just mean the single eye prophets. It's, it's false uh, pastors, bishops, apostles, uh, lay members, because they're following these people and these false philosophies and, and homemade doctrines. We got to be wise. As scripture says, wise as a serpent. We, we have to know those that are before us. And we have to pay respect to those who are laboring in the truth of God's word. Amen. We study the truth. We study the Bible. We, we want to grow. We want to get better. We want to acknowledge God for who he is. And the stronger we get in the word that we hide down deep in us, the better we'll be. We'll be able to stand. Our soul will be anchored in the Lord. We'll be willing to stretch. We'll be willing to get out of that reserved place and do a little more, excel a little more, give a little more give a little more of ourselves, give a little bit more of our talent, give a little bit more unto the work of the Lord, because we're not the only ones that need to be saved. There is a people that we need to reach, and we can't reach those people without contributing to the work of the Lord, the house of the Lord. It doesn't stand off just the foundation alone. There are bills that need to be paid. Who pays those bills? The people of God pay those bills. The people who enter into that house of prayer, who, who are disciples or members of, of whatever church they are, the, their contributions go unto the work of the Lord there. How I got there, only God knows. God, God, God knows what needs to be said. But so where you grow. Give unto the work of the Lord. Except, you know, uh, excel in the works that you're doing. Abound. Don't move. Don't waver. We can't trust in ourselves. Because if we trust in ourselves, we're sentenced to death. But if we put our trust and our hope and our faith in God through prayer, building a relationship with God, we know that he's our divine help. And because he's our divine help, he will give us power, power to permeate, power to persevere, power to push, pray until something happens, power to hold fast, power to stand, power to deny that which the enemy is sending our way to get us off track to distract us, to attack us, to attract us. It just depends on what it is that your sin may be because your sins can find you out. This is why you have to pray that you do not fall into sin as a result of temptation. You got to pray. It's, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. I can't say that enough. It's time to pray. 
And as we pray, we will be able to abound in the works of the Lord. And because we're talking about works, I know many of you are confused. They think that the works are just putting on a program or having conferences and all of these things. Yeah, those things help. Some are to uh, to help raise money for the church because the church needs a little additional to stand, to do work of the ministry. But some are not called by God. If they're not feeding you the word of God, you're not growing. If you're just constantly going to the hundred women in red or the hundred women in white or the hundred women in a, in a big hat. And I don't know why I just keep saying a hundred, but you know the number. You've been to these programs. And you went there, you've sown, you, you have not grown, you've benefited nothing. You can't even say what it was that was preached when you left there. You didn't get a word, but you was looking cute in your red or your white or your big hat, or you knew who was the best dressed. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. You need the word of the Lord to sustain you. You need the word of the Lord to abound in the works of the Lord so that you your your strength will remain so that your faith will fail you not so that you can continue to walk the walk journey with Christ and become all that he's declared for you to be it's okay for you to attend a program if you got the word in you but it's not okay for you to continue Continue to keep attending programs that have no substance. You got to get some stuff, stuff, substance. And uh, it's a shortage of baby milk, baby formula, but it's also a shortage of the milk that you receive. And when you're going into these places, that's not, that's not feeding you. This is milk and meat. It's milk for the new believer. And it's meat for those who have been tried in the fire. Who got the word of the Lord deep down in them. Who are striving to live by this word of the Lord. They got it in them. The enemy don't stand a chance. It's time we get our meat. We, we don't want the milk anyway. The milk can't sustain us. Maybe it could a couple of decades ago, but not anymore. We can't even watch the news because it, it's too it's too wicked. We know that the milk is not getting us anywhere. We need the meat of God's word so that we can be able to stand for ourselves and stand for our brothers and sisters and help each other to get where it is that God has called us to be. You can't assist anybody else when you 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 can't stand. So as we are learning to live the truth of God's word, we're going to abound in the works of the Lord through our continuous study of the scriptures and through prayer. So God can give us power. So God can give us strength. So God can know that we know that we can't do it without him. We need the Lord. In all that we do, we abide in him, he'll abide in us. And we can ask anything that we will in his name. And the word has declared, he will do it. And it is whatever you need to be done. We thank you all for joining us on today. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Those who are tuning in later, we thank you even now for tuning in. We hope that we said something that would help you to stand, help you to be able to abound in the works of the Lord, help you to know that it's time to be about our father's business. We've done enough foolish things in the world and there's no time like now to step up, to get ourselves out of that reserved place. If you're an introvert, if I can do it, you can do it. Amen. Give God your all. Let him use you. 
We thank you again for joining us and tuning in to this Impact Live Bible Study where we are learning God, we're loving God, and we're intentionally planning to apply the word of God in our daily lives. To give on tonight, to sow a seed, to pay your tithe, you may do it now via Cash App, dollar sign, E-Temple, C-O-G. If you use Zelle, you can send it to E-Temple, dot inc at disciples.com or if you'd like to send it uh by mail you can do so make a check or money order out to empowerment temple p.o box 1488 white house texas 75791 and as always you're welcome to go to the website etchurchofgod.org and you can pay online there but you want to be guilty of giving, sowing where you grow. Give unto the work of the Lord and to this ministry where you are being fed, where you are being groomed to be better disciples. Thank you all for joining us. If the Lord wills, we hope to see you next week. Same time, same channel. YouTube Empowerment Temple Church of God. We love you. Have a blessed week in the Lord.